All right, so we've got a quick video here on the Tyro 79. Uh, I was recently asked a question on alternative frames to put the parts into, and I think that there's actually a lot of options out, out, out there, and I'll list some of them down in the description, but this is the frame that I, I think I reviewed a while back. I haven't put anything into it, but I'm gonna put these parts into this frame. Everything uh, should match up uh, pretty easily. This does have, um, this frame, particular frame has a uh, space for two 20 by 20 stacks. Some of the other ones might not, and just have one stack space, uh, just like this frame here, but it might be top mounted like this one here. That's kind of why I went with this frame. I wanted to do a top mounted battery. It's got more space for components, and I could do two cameras here, so I'm going to actually put the Hawkeye 4K split camera. But um, I think it's going to be a little bit less overall weight, so. Let me just show you what this weighs just by the frame by itself and then when I take the parts out of the Tire 79 I'll show you the weight of that frame. So this one is coming at 47 grams. I'm going to go ahead and take all the parts out as it is and then move them over without the 4K camera and I'll show you the weight of the new setup and I'll show you the flight footage after that. Alrighty so uh, here's all the parts moved over into the new frame and I've added the Run cam uh, split three micro camera here, and this frame will take two cameras. You can put a second camera down here if you want to uh, use a regular analog FPV camera here instead of the split camera to fly through. That's what this frame is kind of designed for for those folks that don't like flying through the split camera. But first, before I talk about um, how all this transfer went, let me show you the weight of the old frame. I think the frame, the bare frame, the new bare frame was like 47 grams. The old frame was about 41 grams. So obviously you gain a little bit of weight here and that's actually quite a lot of weight because I've added an extra um, HD camera as well. But uh, I changed the layout of the way the parts moved over here. So if you're looking for a simple transfer, this is probably not the best frame for that. I would recommend the cockroach frame, the other one that's listed down below. That one, um, you can just move the stack over and uh, you can st still use the same analog camera that you were using before. It's, it's an easier transfer. I think this one is more difficult because the motor and motor distance is a little bit further than on the original frame. And I think uh, I cut the wires too short on the original um, build. And so when I tried to move it over here to the center stack, uh, they're too short. So I decided to rearrange everything and I moved the ESC to the back here. And I just use the same motor wires here for these motors here. And for the ones in the front, I use these little LED um, extenders, I guess. Basically, added an extra uh, motor wire length here and use these LEDs here. These are from uh, Flywoo. Pretty tiny and very tricky to solder. I soldered one wire to the top and then two to the bottom. As you can see there. And then I ran the motor wire there underneath the flight controller and then back up through to the uh, top of the EC over here. So I put the EC in the back here. I put the video transmitter here. Flight controller is here, and then the um, split camera is on top of the flight controller. Another thing you should be aware of on this frame, which kind of sucks, is that there's this little piece here that kind of sticks out that limits your stack height here in the center. So something to be aware of, and also the um, uh, what the limits what can you can put on in terms of a uh, board. So, so I originally tried to put this uh, the Firefly 4K split camera in here instead. But uh, the, you can see this is like a pretty thick board. It's actually two boards. So the height's too much for this stack. And it was bumping up uh, against that little carbon piece there. So I ended up not using that camera in this build. All right, so, and lastly, I switched the uh, VTX antenna as well. And also the receiver, I'm using an XM Plus now instead of the small micro uh, receiver. So a lot more weight overall and this is coming in at 173.9 grams so it's pretty heavy so if you're using a bigger battery which i'm planning on using here for this um i think like a 750 
for us. This is definitely going to be over uh, 250 grams. Just letting you guys know, this is a pretty heavy build with the 1606 motors and everything. Anyway, so I think if you want to do the build like this, it's a little more complicated with this frame. Uh, if you have a more simpler transfer, uh, if you're looking for a new frame that's going to be a top mounted uh, style uh, battery, then get the other frame that's down listed on below. It's called the Cockroach. I think it's like $14. And that should be an easier build. And also, you should be able to put all three boards in the center because it should be a taller stack in the center as well. Anyway, that's enough uh, me rambling on with this. Let's go see how this flies. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. So, I haven't done any tuning on this. You can hear a little bit of oscillation here. This is just default PIDs with RPM filter enabled. My standard setup. But it's not bad. I'm going to go ahead and fly it. I may need to use some different props. What's interesting is uh, these same props on these motors did not make this noise on the default tune on the old frame, so it might be related to the frame. But it seems to be flying okay. It's a little windy. I'm going to check the motor temps just to be safe here. Whenever you hear oscillations, you should land and see if the temps are okay. Alright, so the motors are they're fine, they're not even warm, so the oscillation sounds don't seem to be affecting the motor temperatures. Let me see how I'm going to adjust the, um, uh, the pids a little bit here. Let's see what we got. I'm going to change the uh, dynamic filter notch range to high and see if that makes a difference. Sounds about the same. Looks like uh, probably on this frame with the weight and everything, I'm going to have to do actual pit tuning. Oh God. I'm not sure what the HD footage looks like. There's a lot of video noise. Um, I don't remember if this particular video transmitter had a lot of video noise or not. Maybe D min is too low. I'm not sure if it's a just a fluttering. It's hard to tell. I'm gonna see if I I'm gonna change the D min values. I'm going to raise 
steam in, roll pitch up by five each. Still kind of hear that noise. I mean, it's totally flyable. I just, I think it's got some tuning issues I got to work out. And again, can't really see much vibration in the video footage. HD video footage might be able to show some more that I can't see. I may need to just try some different props. Maybe too much pitch for this weight. It's possible. And I'm getting close to the end of the battery here. 650 4S, if you guys are wondering when I'm running here, and I think the 650 4S might get you below the 250, I'm not 100% sure. If it is, I'll uh, put something on the screen, I'll check that when I get back home. I mean, what do you guys hear? You guys can hear that. Does that sound bad to you? I don't know. It is really hard to tell if it's just because it's got some strange pop sounds or it's really the tune. Because it, in terms of the way it feels and the way it flies, it flies totally fine. It's just that it sounds just sounds funny. Anyway, end of the battery. Let me know what you guys think. Talk to you guys later.